Welcome to this tutorial series on the Toxim CJ525. This will be a multi-part series. In this first video, we'll have a look at the different type of citation jets. We'll go over control settings that I have set up for the plane, and I'll show you some references that helped me learn and operate this plane. In the next video, we'll have a familiarization both inside and outside the aircraft. And then in the following videos, we'll actually fly both VFR and IFR to show you how to operate the plane. So let's start with the types of citation jets. This is the English Wikipedia article on the Cessna citation jet. And as you can already see in the variants, we have four different types of CJs. The one we have is the model 5 to 5. And this one, the first one, just called citation jet without any CJ, without any M2. That's the first citation jet from, I think, 92, 91, which has the FJ441As and the analog gauges. So it looks like this. Then we have the citation jet CJ1, which has the same engines. FJ44-1A, but it has a Proline 21 avionics suite that looks like this. So we have big displays, sometimes also on the co-pilot side right here, and it's just an overall more modern avionics suite. Next, we have the Citation Jet CJ1 Plus, which also has a Proline 21 avionics suite, but it has different engines. Now we have FJ44-1AP, and then we also have the M2, the M2 Gen 2, which again have different variants. We have a G3000 on them. And the M2 also has small winglets, as you can see here. Next, we have the 525A, also known as the CJ2, which is a longer version of the CJ1. So we can see it has six windows now instead of four. And then we have the 525B, which is a CJ3, which is a longer CJ2. So we can see a CJ3 right here. Then we have the 525C, which is a longer CJ3, so it's a CJ4, and it looks like this. So now, from the outside, how can we tell if we have a CJ or CJ1 or a CJ1 plus? If we go to the outside of the CJ, we see these black paddle-like things behind the engines. They are called thrust attenuators, and they actually fold behind the engines, like they fold 90 degrees. And those are typical for the CJ and the CJ1. If we look at a CJ1 plus this one, we can see that we don't have the thrust attenuators anymore. So this is how you can tell apart the CJ1 plus from the other two. It's kind of hard finding information on just the citation jet without the CJ1 or CJ1 plus behind it, because the other ones will show up in the search results, so always make sure you're looking at the correct plane when you look for information on it. Next, let's look at controls. I'm using a Logitech Xtreme 3D Pro, and I have certain things bound specifically for the CJ. First one being the autopilot disconnect button on this one right here. So that is this big red button right here. Then I have the speed brakes up and down bound on these lower buttons. Speed brake controls are right here. They are a bit hard to reach during flight, so I have bound them to a joystick button. Next, we have the go around button. Same reason, it's here on the side of the thrust levers. Also kind of hard to reach in flight, so it gets a button. And last but not least, we have the flaps, both up and down. Usually I just use the one and the two key, but on the CJ, we have to put the flaps into the ground flaps position right here after landing. And it's kind of hard if you're flying with two hands and then have to reach for the keyboard and press a small key. Uh, so I have bound that to joystick buttons as well. Then we have another thing in the CJ and also in some other planes, like the Kinga, for example. We have some autopilot controls on the central pedestal right here. They have different shapes. So in the real life, if you just put your hand down there, you can feel which one you're operating. But first of all, we cannot just put our hand down there. And uh, secondly, we cannot feel them. So it makes sense to bind them to something. There's also a pop-up if you press on the left edge of the panel right here, you'll get a pop-up, you can operate them from here. I just prefer to have them bound to keys. 
And I use the numpad for that. So let's go over my numpad setup. So usually the numpad keys are bound to views. Um, I have the default cockpit view bound on numpad zero. So that is just this view right here. And I have the numpad one key bound to an exit view. So I find myself coming into this position quite often to either operate the door or do something in the cabin. So I have this position as well. Next are the controls I just talked about. So the heading controls I've bound on two and three. The altitude I've bound on five and six and the course I've bound on eight and nine. There are more controls though. There's also this pitch wheel, which you use, for example, to set your climb or descent rate. I've bound that to seven and four. So the seven is down, four is up. Uh, and these two, well, in real life, you would move the dial left and right. So I've mapped them in like a horizontal layout. Um, there are also buttons for the autopilot and yaw damper. I've mapped them to the lead key and the enter key. I've mapped them the other way around because the enter key, the autopilot key is the more important one of the two. Then I've also mapped the COM1 controls. So uh, the outer knob, the inner knob, and the swap knob right here. So it's kind of hard to operate this thing, especially if you have the g load camera turned on. And I don't want to always have to zoom in and then operate these, these dials, especially if you're flying online. So I've mapped them. So I have my minus and my plus key for the megahertz portion of COM1. I have my slash and asterisk key for the kilohertz version of the COM1. And I have shift and plus to switch or swap the standby and the active frequency. So this setup really helps me in flight. Uh, it's a great way of operating the autopilot controls in my opinion. So highly recommend binding them to something or maybe bind a key to bring up this pop-up if you prefer to operate them with the mouse. Okay, now let's go over some references. First I have some PDFs, then I have some videos. Um, let's go to the official Toxim documentation site right now. You can reach this site from the official Toxim site. I'll also put the links down in the video description. So first of all, there's the official user manual. There's the normal procedures, which is basically a checklist. You have the handbook for the UNS1 for the FMS. So this thing right here. And you have the full performance manual, which is uh, a community effort. And I highly recommend that one. It looks like this. You have the takeoff performance, you have the landing performance, and also the thrust settings for climb and cruise. And what you basically get is lots of tables. So you have, for example, a takeoff performance table, and you get them for different attitudes and flip settings. And uh, this is a very, very nice help for planning your flight. Next, we have the pilot training manuals. There are two volumes, volume one and volume two. Um, you can find this one, the volume one, on the Discord, on the Toxim Discord. There's a pinned post, I think it's called POH or something with POH, where you can find this manual also. Volume one, um, it has an expanded checklist where it goes over normal, abnormal, and emergency procedures. We have limitations and we have this maneuvers and procedures, which I find especially interesting. Um, you get things like this one, for example, where it is shown how you fly a pattern with the CJ. So you know your speeds, your altitudes, your configurations in different phases of flight. So really nice to get to know the plane. Then there's the PTM volume two, which is not on the Discord, but if you search for this file, uh, you will be able to find it online. So this has information on really everything you could ever want. You have the fuel system, for example, you get information on the fuel systems, pictures, very nice menu. If you cannot find this or want something that's available on the official Discord, there's also this called the CJ55 training supplement. It has, first of all, the extended checklist with pictures. So you see pictures of everything that you're supposed to operate, which is really great if you're using a checklist for the first time and you don't know where some switches or some dials are. Further down a document, you'll have system descriptions, both in graphics and in text. Next, we have the normal procedures, which is the one you find on the Discord. It's basically the same as the normal procedures you find here, a little bit different layout. 
we can actually open it up right now. That's what the Troxim one looks like. And that's the one uh, from the Discord. Nice thing about that one is you have the annunciators down here, which I quite like. Last PDF, it's also on the Discord, the TOLD card. So TOLD stands for Takeoff and Landing Data. And this one's really useful. You have a place to put your speeds, your weights, your flap settings. And what I've done with mine, uh, so it's basically, it's, it's meant to be folded here. And then you have like two instances of it. I just, I just deleted all the top things and use this one for notes and this one as my TOLD card. And this is very, very nice, especially when flying online. So lastly, I have three videos I want to recommend. First one is uh, this one. It is a video by the European Flight Academy. They're using a CJ1 Plus. And this, you can see it's an almost two hour video. It goes through everything from flight planning, walk around, pre-flight preparations, all the way to a full IFR flight and also a visual pattern and then the shutdown. So this is a great way of getting to know how to operate this plane. You can see it's a two pilot operation. So it's a bit different from how most of you will be flying the CJ, but it's a very, very nice reference in my opinion. Keep in mind, this is a CJ1 Plus, so it has the ProLine 21 everything as well. Next one is uh, this one by Guido Warnecke. And this actually shows single pilot operations in a CJ1. So also ProLine 21 everything. But this is also nice to see how actual single pilot operations are done. And lastly, we'll have the UNS1 tutorial, so the tutorial on the FMS. And this one goes through things like initializing, flight plan creation, editing, fuel pages, nav pages, and direct to. So all the normal functions of the UNS you'll need. That's it for this video. Next video will be a formalization both inside and outside. And then in the following video after that, we'll go fly the CJ. So see you then.